These are KUKA's newest APOLA 120 ARGB fans and they are quite interesting for many reasons. One of which is KUKA's way of dodging a Li and Li lawsuit, cause similarly to uni fans, you can daisy chain these into a single block. Just take an APOLA fan, pull out these hooks, smash the second one on there and boom, bipolar. But before I say anything else that might get me into trouble, let's get to the specs. There are two color versions of this, a white one and a black one featuring these grey side pieces. Each of them exists in a triple or a single pack consisting of a set of additional rubber anti-vibration pads to glue onto your fan or onto your case if you really want to, a set of case and radiator screws and an additional side piece to get the fans going. And that is for each fan. And I really gotta give Kuga some credit here. Lian Lee doesn't do it, uh, Corsair doesn't do it and yeah, I don't really remember who else did like chainable fans, but when you get a triple pack of whatever daisy chainable fan, they uh, like always come with one or max two pieces of, of connection from the fan to the PC. And for some reason, everybody will always think that you are going to use them in like a, a triple uh, daisy chain setup. Well, sometimes you don't. And for Kuga, if you want to mount them in completely different locations, yeah, they, they will provide you with the material to do that, which, which is, isn't usual. Speaking of the side pieces, on two sides of the fan you got these pogo connections. The female one on the right and the male on the left. And you can see where you got the PWM and 3-pin ARGB with the number of pins. And to connect the fans you get these before mentioned side pieces and what you need to do is take these hooks off, align the piece in a way that that does make sense and no you can't get it the wrong way and yes this is the brutal part. And to get it off it's even more brutal. You will need to pull on that thing like really hard or push it on like really hard so be prepared to do that. And yes, this is a solid grip and it's both for daisy chaining fans and for the, the end or the start piece. It's, it's just brutal to put it on there. But you can't do it wrong and it's like a good connection. And from there you got a 50 cm long 4 pin PWM cable and a yeah like 49 cm long 3 pin RGB cable. I have no clue why one cable is like a centimeter shorter than the other one. It, it doesn't make any sense to me either. Something else that does not only look interesting but also has a purpose to some degree. By default there is no rubber around the mounting holes, which seems weird in the beginning, but Kuga came up with something they called Quiet Stop, a dampening system where the piece that keeps the fan attached to its destination is attached to the fan with rubber in between. So even if Kuga does include additional like glueable rubber mountings to glue around the hole or for your case or whatever you want to do, it is already dampened by itself. And if you remember the Alpha Cool Metal fans, they had something kind of similar going where they separated the whole frame essentially from the impeller. Here it's slightly different as it's each corner being separately dampened from the rest of the fan. But the, the end result is kind of the same. If the impeller vibrates, these vibrations will get dampened before they go to the corners and then before they go onto the case. Something else you might have noticed, these holes are like really small. And I know it looks like the corners are metal, but no, it's just regular old plastic and you will get the same screws as you always do. But, at least in my opinion, because these holes do look to me like they are slightly smaller than the usual corner hole, it does seem to me like screwing in a case screw once does more damage to this fan than to any other fan. And I can already tell you, if you have issues getting out these hooks, which I do because of my sausage fingers, using whatever tool if that tool is made of, out of metal, you will very quickly do damage to these corners. These corners do not like metal. Other than that, we got a 7 blade design with a milky acrylic impeller and a metally looking Kuga badge in the center. Including some airflow enhancing channels on the blades. Which Nokia already proved to work on, on their end, so let's just assume that they do more good than harm over here. And of course ARGB and to be honest here I believe the implementation is remarkable for Kuga. We got these two sides which aren't used for daisy chaining and in the center we got some LEDs pointed away from the central part giving the impeller that underglow look. And damn these transitions are hella smooth and the LEDs are surprisingly bright. It's maybe not 
quite on a Lee and Lee level, but this is like really close for a fan that works completely softwareless. Really, really good job here. I might not be the biggest ARGB loving person under the sun. I am able to evaluate if something is done right and here it is definitely done right. And for the last point it's just raw stats. This is actually a 28 millimeter thick fan and it's spinning up to 2200 rpm while it's pushing up to 75.38 CFM at up to 2.59 millimeters of H2O. And surprisingly enough for a 2200 rpm fan it is not particularly loud. But let's first cover the max performance benchmarks. For our first test, we use the case simulator, a wooden box that allows two fans to be installed and then we basically measure the fans capacity to recycle the air within the box by looking at the CPU temperature underneath a passively cooled Noxia P1. And whilst allowing the fans to ramp up to their max 2200 RPM, the Apolar managed to keep the CPU at 44 degrees C above ambient, which is actually an okay result. It's slightly behind a Noxia NFA12X25, which is okay, and it is marginally behind the Ender 5 Fluctus, which was actually an excellent case fan. And compared to the everlasting base, the Arctic P12, it's above. So it's, in, in, at least in my book, it's a fan worth looking at. Another important comparison would be the Kuga MHP120, which, which is just odd, because this one is spinning 200 RPM slower. However, because of its very different fan blade design, that one pushes slightly more air and a lot harder. So almost, and we will get to the almost, everything makes sense. And because we are still talking about cases, it's more important to talk about the noise. By slowly lowering the fan speed, we can create these noise to performance curves. And on this one, the Apolar ended up being an interesting middle ground. It's not quite the I am way too loud for what I do, like the Kuga MHP120, but it's also not quite the optimized fan like a Fantex M25. But something else caught my eye here, because Kuga officially says the Apolar fan that we are benchmarking today is about 3 dBA louder than the MHP120. Well, my dB meter and my ears and my brain says I, I don't believe that. I don't know what is up here, but no, a the Apolar is clearly not as loud as the MHP, no matter what the specs sheet says. And I always thought that you could trust the DBA rating as a, at least as long as it is made within the same company. Yeah, I don't get it now. Anyway, it's okay. It's not quite the banger and it's not particularly loud at the high end. But unfortunately, it is also not quite the Arctic P12 in noise to performance. Over to radiators where we let the fan push through a 10 FPI 80 millimeter radiator to see how much the fan can cool down the water by looking at the difference between the water temperature and the ambient air temperature. And at max speed, the Apolar kept the water temperature at 12.5 degrees C above ambient, which puts it right next to the Fluctus again. <laughs> anyway, it is again slightly behind the NFA12 and lands again in somewhat the middle section of the whole graph. It's not particularly powerful, but at least it's not particularly loud as well. The noise to performance graph for rats delivers somewhat comparable results. It's not particularly loud at the high end, but the parts where the fan is best kinda change. On cases, the Apolar was slightly better than the MHP on the higher end, where it is now consistently worse, but below 80% fan speed, it actually started to outperform the Fandex M25, and it managed to drop off ever so slightly faster to noise floor compared to the Arctic P12 Max. So, it's an interesting fan. On one side, we got that connection system, which is fine, it works fine. It is brutal, but it works fine, and the connection is like... This is a good... I wouldn't do that with a Lee and Lee fan. Maybe it's just like a price thing where I'm afraid to break like a hundred bucks, but this... It's only kept in by these hooks and by pressing... Okay, I, I found the limit. But the limit is far. At least the limit is very far. And it's softwareless, which is great. And Kuga does give you as much individual connection points as you got fans. 
good. And the quality was kind of surprising to me, to be honest. When I got the fan, I first thought we are looking at like the average Alienware PC, a crap load of plastic that feels like the cheapest possible shit. And to some degree, I, I was kind of right. There is a hell lot of plastic on there, but it is put together in a way that the whole structure just ends up being like surprisingly rigid. The whole fan is... It's actually quite good. You can see that, for example, by the amount of force I have to put onto the sides to actually start touching the impeller. Like, it is okay. But the biggest surprise to me was definitely the AIGB implementation. Compared to the usual, like, I want to look special fan, and I'm not going to name anybody here, uh, this is good. This is, like, really good. The LEDs are good. And performance, it's surprisingly average for a 2200 RPM fan. It's no chart topper in none of my tests, but at the same time, they are not really loud, which was even more surprising after I benchmarked the MHP120. So if you're looking for a monster fan, this ain't it. And if you're looking for the quietest fan, this also ain't it. This is something in between. It can do a bit, but it won't annoy you while doing it. Price-wise, it's a... Um, uh, I found these on Amazon for 70 bucks. And here in Europe, I didn't find them at all. So that gives me a 23 plus minus USD per fan, which isn't bad. But I would have liked to see something more like 19 bucks for the performance. That would have been more appropriate. But on the other end, if we are looking only at fans that have that minimum cable setup where you can daisy chain one like whole fan to the other one, well, if you only look at those, you are actually looking at a somewhat affordable fan. In my opinion, they are okay. They are a solid middle ground. And this should be all for the new Kuga iPolar 120 ARGB. And at this point, a huge thank you to Kuga for sending them over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a crowbar to get these fuckers off. The, the hook connection is, like, really strong. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Kuga MHP120 fan. They are slightly better at max speed, but at the cost of, like, noise. More, way more noise. Anyway, hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.